and welcome to the sexier sound of the Youngins podcast. Uh, that's what we've decided. We are a much sexier podcast now, and uh, we have the sexy sounds of the Unthanks in the background, who are currently doing their sound check. We are on tour with the Unthanks, and next week I'm sure we'll be. We'll be bringing you an interview or some chat or whatever with the Unthanks. In fact, I've just recorded some uh, trumpet playing. I've been learning to play the trumpets courtesy of Victoria from the Unthanks. I have been blowing the Unthanks trumpet, so to speak. This week's guests, Phil Henry and Hannah Martin. Ooh, the music changes. I'm mood gets a little bit more solemn. As I explained that Phil Henry and Hannah Martin won last year's best duo in the BBC Radio 2 Folk Awards. Oh yes, the music gets more dramatic. This week, two songs, a little bit of chat as well. Thank you. Any time, my friends. We'll be talking about their dreams and I shall be learning how to beatbox. Oh, there's a bit of freestyling going on here. This is uh, an exclusive now. This is the Unthanks drummer freestyling. Meanwhile, Becky passes me. Hello, Becky. Rachel. Rachel, sorry. (laughs) You're all interchangeable. Exactly. (laughs) Some lovely improvising here from the, the drummer. Now, I should warn you that I was a little bit jet-lagged during this interview. Uh, we'd been in Kansas for a few days, and uh, we hadn't really had much sleep, and so I get a bit confused. I keep calling Phil and Hannah the wrong names, and I also get confused with the award that they won as well, as you will hear. So I might jet- I'm using jet-lag as my excuse for that. Anyway, how very inconsiderate of the unthanks trumpeter to be playing so loud when we're trying to do a podcast introduction. So without any further ado, I give you Phil Henry and Hannah Martin. Phil Henry. Hello, mate. And Hannah Martin. Um, who are up for best duo. No, uh, no. This, no, no, no. You know? <laughs> you won it. You won it last year. Yeah. You won it last year, didn't you? That's right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is good. This is, is key. No, this... <laughs> This is going to go out in 2014. Uh, it's a delayed podcast that we've just found on the floor. Um, so apologies for that. Right, OK. So, uh, with that in mind, how, how do you feel about the fact that you may win uh, that award? <laughs> yeah, we feel pretty Imagine confident. if you won it, just tell us how it would feel. Well, we feel pretty confident that we're going to win it. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just got an inkling, like uh, something in my waters is telling me that we're going to win. So. There's something in your waters. So I'm gonna s- you're sitting on our bed, so I'd rather you do that. <laughs> so you two are in a relationship together. So you're musical partners and conjugal partners. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, which came first? It's like which came first, the chicken and the egg. People ask that question. Which came first, the music or the relationship for Hannah? And we, we were in together. <laughs> 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 it's me now. I'm still jet lagged. <laughs> I'm still jet lagged. This is why Mark Radcliffe always goes uh, uh, before he says something because it gives him time to think. Right. Okay. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That's what we were asking, wasn't it? There we are. Um, we were in a band together. Right. So, so yeah. So the music. The music came first, yes. and then what was it about uh, Phil Hannah that um, <laughs> you know made you decide to go to the next level? Was it just easier because you you know you could rehearse? Uh, yeah, thing, convenience. That's what it's all about. Exactly. You could rehearse without leaving the bed. <laughs> that's good. Excellent. I'm sure you guys do that too. Uh, well, yes, we do. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get the chance to rehearse, though we're too busy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Phil, likewise, what was it about Hannah there that, uh, that drew your attention? Uh, yeah. Convenience. Convenience. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> we're getting a real candid and honest <laughs> interview here. I think we should hear our first song before this... Uh, goes into the depths of depravity and insanity. So uh, what, what would you like to do for us first? We're going to do uh, Nail Maker's Strike. Right. And this is where I'm going to teach you how to do some beatbox. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. So am I going to do some beatboxing while you're playing? Um, Effectively ruining the song. Well, we'll see how it goes first. <laughs> right, because it may be best... We might be able to get best group, because obviously now it's not a duo anymore. <laughs> so maybe this year, the next year will be best group. Who knows? <laughs> 
Excellent. So is he going to teach you some beatboxing now, are you? Fancy that? Yeah. I absolutely do, oh, yes. <clears throat> I know you've got a nice little okay. voice. You can do that. <clears throat> that's it, you've got that. Is that good, or should I have something else? That's, that's the more resonant, bit. small. No, that's good, that's good. Because okay. I, I do take direction very well. Good. Yeah. Now, your, your snare sound is... You're going to suck in air through the side of your mouth. Like that. And then all you've got to do is chop it. <laughs> chop it as cleanly as you can. Chop it like a... All right! <laughs> it's, like, it's like Donald Duck doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Oh, yes, we got it. Now, now all we need is... Now all we need is a little bit of rapping, and uh, I think we've got this in the bag. Uh, OK, so is that all I need to do in that song? Yeah. I'll try and do it as far away from the microphone yeah, as possible. Maybe you go in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And would you like to say anything about the actual song and what drew you to it and what it's about and all that kind of thing? Hey, it tells the story of a nail maker strike, 1862, mm-hmm. in uh, the black country. Well, nice. like, technically not the black country, but hails are into Bromsgrove. One of them's in the black country, <clears throat> one of them isn't. And is this... We get corrected by uh, Brummies very often for that. And is this so. written by yourself? We have arranged the traditional song right. and added a chorus, which is kind of um, kind of semi self composed, slightly okay. plagiarised, and uh, it's got a reggae feel to it. Okay, well, and I'm just taking my job seriously, so I'm just going to have some water. Have some water here. And if um, you lads want to sing along with yeah. the chorus, it's nice and easy. Over to you!
haven't uh, done my beatboxing yet. I think maybe we should do that at the end. We could we could ro- the rolling credits. We could end with the beatboxing, maybe. I'd just love to see you do a chorus of that, try and imitate what... Philip you think I should try? Okay, well, I'll do it. <coughs> <coughs> You've got to... It's difficult without the harmonica. It's difficult. <laughs> it's easy with the harmonica. It's such yeah. a problem with you. You've got to... <laughs> for you. <laughs> like my brother. <laughs> if you're ever ill, Phil, I'll take over. <laughs> you're <gonna> right. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> Martha's burp. <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay. got to fight for your rights, my buddy. Yeah. Go, go. Fight for your rights, my sister. My brother, you did you discover? You had this ability to play the harmonica and beatbox. Did you have an ulcer um, or something at one point? And you just made odd noises with your mouth, and you thought, "Actually, this is pretty good." I I think that developed on stage. I've done quite a lot of tough gigs. Uh, as for example, I played solo harmonica after a sixteen-piece funk band on New Year's Eve in a nightclub in Exeter. So it was and like, be expected to make as much noise as that. Yeah, yeah. So I started having to uh, fill so in a few gaps. It's a survival know. tactic, then, I suppose. Yeah, so you definitely. can. It is, but I'm also interested in making a lot of sound with the limited resources. That's something that's always interested me. In what is incredible is you're both doing such unique things that you take it into a completely different territory. You take it into that kind of almost electronic. Mm. Sound with the stuttering and the beatboxing and that kind of thing, and, and the textures as well that you you do the you know the the, the fiddle yeah. which I yeah, think is the technical. Well, uh, and often when you do live yeah. as well, you've got yeah. stomp box and stuff, and you're doing a lot of percussion. So it's kind of electronic sounding, but completely acoustic, which I think is what's so impressive about it. Yeah. And maybe is interesting for the people who. who a bit reserved about that kind of music because they don't like music folk music to have synthesizers and that kind of thing and yeah. those people who may be a little bit uh, upset by things like the imagined village and that kind of thing may look at you mm. and think oh I don't know what I can say about this because they're just they're yeah. doing it but they're doing it acoustically we were yeah. a bit worried that people might object at first when we were first playing lots of folk clubby mm. you know quite finger in the ear strict mm. environments and yeah. people have always just been really nice another thing you can kind of uh trace the lineage of the harmonica style back to it's almost like country blues really that kind of style of singing and playing the harmonica at the same time it's a Sonny Terry kind of thing so if, if you frame it in that way it, you can see that the lineage and uh, the people who are a little bit on the traditionalist side it softens the blow <laughs> <laughs> how do you decide going about because I mean that's the instruments and things but how do you decide the, which songs to sing and, and, and why folk music why was it folk music rather than sort of more experimental a genre of music maybe that's naturally more inclined towards instrumental experimentation um, uh, we always question. both really love folk get, music and there's also a, like a practical reason that mm. there's a really good circuit of folk clubs in the UK yeah. and places to play and actually make a living Whereas if we started playing experimental free jazz, I honestly don't know who would give us a gig. <laughs> so it's all commercial reasons. Oh yeah, that's, that's the sort of people we are. You know? we, love, we love folk music. We love, you know, mm. that's, what, that's what we want to do. So how do you decide the songs that you're going to sing then? What? We write, we write I'd say, yeah, 80%. More. Yeah. That we kind of uh, compose ourselves. Yeah. Who are or what are your influences? How long have you got? Quite wide. Yeah. Uh, well, 27 seconds, if possible. <laughs> Well, we're influenced by um, folk music of the British Isles, obviously. So, like Chris Wood, 
is a great yeah. favourite of ours, mm-hmm. Liza Carsey. Yeah. And then things like, uh, I grew up listening to lots of Steel Ice Band, Maddie Pryor, Peter Knight, those kind of musicians. Martin Simpson's a big influence on me. It, was, uh, it kind of got me into playing tunes on the slide guitar, listening to him. Uh, but American players like Jerry Douglas, obviously. Some Indian players like Pandit Debashish Bhattacharya, who I studied with for a period of time. Oh, really? Um, in India? or <laughs> Yeah, in Calcutta, yeah. 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 Oh, really? That's amazing. Mm. Oh, it's incredible. So you, it's a real musical journey then that you, you've been on. Was it was it for that express purpose? Yeah, it was Yeah, it was like a pilgrimage. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a pilgrimage. You found yourself. <laughs> Did you find yourself there? <laughs> And you had to get on the plane afterwards. That's always the trouble when you find yourself on holiday, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you anything to declare, you know. Um, and I know about trip. you. Have you done any pilgrimages or anything like that? <laughs> Not really, no. No? <laughs> Sorry. No? All right. Well, then, uh, <laughs> you could just say, I, I saw salvation when I was in Asda. And that's where I myself. <laughs> right. Let's have another song shall we and what would you like to do for us for our final song alright we're going to play Silver Hill this is one of our own songs
We talked about what th- that song and what it was about, mm. I think. That one is yeah. about Silbury Hill in Wiltshire. We paid a visit to West Kennet Longbarrow and uh, kind of experienced a kind of time slippage. Ooh. We felt like we'd gone back in time. Oh, and we had not been drinking or smoking oh, anything. Doing anything. <laughs> That is absolutely. I think experiencing a time slippage when we listen to your music is just absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Back Thank to you. When we were still nominees for the folk awards. Of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right there. We're good. We're discussing dreams. We often discuss dreams on the podcast because, as we've, as we've alluded to previously, we uh, we do often share a room, and uh, so we wake up by each other's sides. And so, as we're the first people that we speak to, um, we recount our various dreams. So I was wondering whether you've had a dream. It doesn't have to be folk related. It could be any <laughs> dream at all. But it's something interesting that you would like to divulge. Maybe a reoccurring dream. Maybe a dream that has shaped your reality. Who knows? Just. Is there anything that springs to mind when it comes to the subject quite, of dreams? I'm quite an active sleeper. Right. So oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, good, good for you, it. Phil. Hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, all the perks. Excellent. <laughs> I tend to um, sleep talk quite right. a lot. So when, when I'm at home, my sister's room's next door to mine, and apparently we, talk, we both talk in our sleep and we have a conversation. That doesn't make sense. You and Phil, you and your sister? No, me and my sister. It must be something in my family. Right. Yeah. It's not really a dream. But. No, that's absolutely fine, but it is valid. <laughs> it's absolutely valid. We asked, um, we asked Ben and Jussian about their dreams, and we ended up getting onto alphabetical CD sorting. So, wow. um, yeah, how you sort your albums, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> which you probably think is more of an interesting topic than the discussion of dreams. But, Phil, have you anything to, um, to add to the dream discussion at all? I think I quite often practice guitar in my sleep. And, um, it's really irritating. How do you... You're sort of doing this with your hands? Or? I don't know, I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but Anna knows what... You, you yeah, presumably he does. are... He does. He just... He wiggles his hands. He just wiggles his hands around. Right, so, guys, okay, so I say, all the perks are... This is <laughs> unbelievable. Well, it's me. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant talking to you. Thank you very much. Guys. Yes, thank you very much to Phil Henry and Anna Martin. Jossie and Clark and Ben Walker walked into the room... And um, so we decided, since I had just learned how to beatbox, I should put this to good use. I think it would be unfair if they were in the room and we'd just been beatboxing over Phil and Hannah. We, we, you know, I think they deserve the accolade of having one of their songs beatboxed over by me. I mean, I think they would be pretty disconsolate if that didn't happen. So this is uh, Jossian and Ben and myself attempting a beatbox version of one of their songs, which is an Elgar piece from the classical composer Elgar. So maybe you should start with just in doing a few lines as she normally does it, then Ben will provide a, a tick a tick a beat and off we go. I've got no idea how this Don't is going to go. Don't you worry, this is going to be good. Break breaking four at some point. As torrents in summer half died in the child. Hang on, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to do like a. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, how, how so sounds how good, sounds good. Here we go. This time I'll be ready. This time I'll. This time what I'll do, I'll do the. I'll go. I'll do the. <laughs> and we're in. Okay. Okay. We yeah. start in the normal time. As torrents in summer. Boop, 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 boop. 
Michael, and I wish you bloody hadn't. That was one of those moments. I'm just standing there going, I'm not sure what on earth to do to make it at all workable. Oh. And with the sombre sounds of the unthanks fiddler, by which I mean the violin player, not an inappropriate fan, we say thank you very much for listening to this podcast with Phil Henry and Hannah Martin, uh, live from the backstage and an unthanks sound check where we are currently on tour with the unthanks we'll uh, we'll bring you some unthanks chat next week on the podcast but till then from me david eagle from the man carrying the chairs onto the stage who's just passed me from rachel unthank who's coughing thank you for listening and goodbye a little bit of complimentary coughing this is extra now you can have this for free. Many people would pay good money to hear Rachel Unthanks coughing her lungs out in a sound check. We can bring it to you exclusive to the Youngins Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. favourite songs especially that bit there that bit's... <laughs> <laughs> the unthanks do horror <laughs> excellent <laughs>